All right, so today we're going to um, continue looking at inequalities. Okay, pretty much um, same idea we did yesterday, getting the variable by itself, except instead of just adding and subtracting, we might have to use multiplication and division. All right, so we just got to be careful when we multiply and divide. There's one important thing we, we have to remember. And we're going to go through, let's see, I think I got a table, I got the same table you guys got. We'll go through that, and you'll see one thing that can happen we've got to be careful about. All right, so this okay, is just a reminder about something we did before. All right, we're going to write it for an inequality, but this part you just can look at. All right, so we are allowed to multiply both sides of an equation, okay, or an equality, by the same number. The only number you're not allowed to use is zero. Because okay? if you multiply both sides of an equation by zero, you'd wipe everything out. The whole equation would be gone. All right? And we can do this same idea with inequalities. You are allowed to multiply both sides of an inequality by the same number, as long as you don't use zero. And that will give you an equivalent inequality. Okay? There's just one thing that we do need to be careful about. Okay, as we try to extend that idea. And there's one, like, there's one special rule that we didn't have when we had an admin <coughs> All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at some different inequalities, and then we're going to do something to both sides, look at the new inequality, and see if it's still true or if we did something that made it false. Right? So here's our first inequality. Three is less than four. What I want to do is multiply each side by 5 and see if it's still true. All right? um, so Justin, what's 3 times 5? Yep, 15. Just going to copy down my symbol. And Alex, what's 4 times 5? 20. 20. Okay, so in that first row under new inequality, you should have 15 is less than 20. And now ask yourself, is that true? Is 15 less than 20? Yeah. yeah, that's true. Right, so multiplying both sides by the number 5, bless you, okay, worked perfect. Okay, it didn't, it didn't mess anything up. Does everybody agree with that? Still true? Okay. All right, let's try this one. This time, we're going to try it with division. Okay, we're going to divide each side of this inequality by the number 2. All right, so let's just check the one we're starting off with, make sure everybody agrees this is true. Does everybody agree that negative 4 is bigger than negative 20? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, negative 4 is a bigger number than negative 20. Okay. Let's divide each side by 2, see what happens. Um, Kevin, what's negative 4 divided by 2? Two? Two. Yep, negative 2. And Sabrina, what's negative 20 divided by 2? Negative 10. Negative 10. Okay, now I want you guys to look at this one. And tell me, is this true or false? True. Yeah, true. Negative 2 is greater than negative 10. That is true. All right, so what's the big deal, right? Looks like we can multiply both sides by a number. We could divide both sides by a number. And it didn't mess up the original problem. We started with something that was true. We ended with something that was true. Does anybody know where the problem comes in? I'm going to look at that right now. Does anybody know? All right, well, let's, let's take a look and, and see what happens. Okay, let's try this one. First thing I want to do, just make sure everyone agrees this is, this is correct. Is negative 5 less than negative 3? Corey? Yeah. yeah. Negative 5 is smaller than negative 3. So we're starting off with something that's true. And I'm going to do the same thing to both sides. I'm going to multiply by negative 1. Okay. Ryan, what's negative 5 times negative 1? 5. 5. Let's keep that. And how about, um, Caitlin, what's negative 3 times negative 1? 3. Okay. Is that a true or a false statement? 5 is smaller than 3. That's false. 5 is less than 3? That, that's not true. 
Something went wrong <coughs> here. Okay, let's try one more, and then maybe you guys can figure out why the first two were true and why the second two are going to be false. Okay, 18 is bigger than negative 6, of course. Positive numbers are always bigger than negative numbers. Okay. I want to divide each side here by negative 3. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. Uh, ben, what's 18 divided by negative 3? Negative 6. Negative 6. And how about Davin? What's um, negative 6 divided by negative 3? Uh, the number is good, just the sign. What's a negative over a negative? Uh, positive. positive. Okay. Is this a true statement? Negative 6 is bigger than 2. No. That's false. All right, so it looks like when we multiplied each side by a number, sometimes it worked fine, sometimes it didn't. What's the difference between this one and this one? How come it worked in the first row, but it didn't work in the third row? Anybody see the, what's the, what kind of number did we multiply each side by in the first row? Yeah? A positive number. What kind of number did we use when we did it the second time? A negative number. Notice the same thing with division. Anytime we use a negative number, it didn't work. Okay? So there's a trick we're gonna rem we have to remember. Anytime you multiply or divide by a negative number. Okay, because we can see if we don't remember this trick we're about to show you things turn out false. Okay, they come out wrong. All right, so from the table, okay, we notice that if you multiply or divide each side by a positive number, everything worked fine. Okay, look at rows one and two. Okay, when we multiplied by positive five, it was true, worked fine. Multi divide by positive two, it was true, worked fine. But if we multiply both sides by a negative, we got a false inequality. Okay? If we divided both sides by a negative, we got a false inequality. So we're writing that down. No, I'm not to write all that. No, that's just summarizing what we just oh. said. All I should have filled in now is just a check. I'm not going to write all that. All right, so that's the problem when we multiply and divide by, by negatives. All right. So this part you are going to write on your yeah, notes. Okay, the spot that says if. Yeah, so you, you, get, so so you get some li you get some lines there before if. That's where you got to write in the actual multiplication property of the equality. Yep. So on those lines, yeah, right above if it says yeah. multiplying both sides of an inequality by a positive number produces an equivalent inequality. In other words, an, equality, an inequality that's still true. You guys just saw that in the table. Okay, but where the problem comes in is if we multiply by a negative number. Right, so we saw when we multiplied by a negative, it's like the symbol was pointing the wrong way. So what do you think we need to do to the symbol when we multiply by a negative number? We need to take it and do what with it? Yeah, we got to flip it. All right? If we don't flip it, we saw what happens. It ends up pointing the wrong way. Okay, so after you copy down the multiplication property of equality, inequality, where it says if, okay, if we multiply both sides by a negative, you have to flip the inequality. If you forget to do that, what happens? The problem comes out backwards. You end up shading completely the wrong way. 
Okay. You guys, yeah, yesterday we were doing some of these where the variable wasn't at the beginning, and you had to, we said you had to flip it. But in this case, you're actually going to turn the sign the other way from where it is. Now you're going to physically whip it. Now that arrowhead's pointing, you want to make it point the other way. You don't have to, not flip, you don't have to rearrange the whole order of how you have it set up. You just need to flip the way that the inequality sign's pointing. And remember, only when you only when you are actually like you're putting times negative three or divided by negative four. If there's a negative already there, if there's a negative already there, and you're dividing it by a positive, you're not dividing by a negative there, right? I think there was one that Mr. Hager had when we did the chart there, and you actually you still were still dividing by a positive. You were dividing a positive by a negative number, dividing by a negative that was already there. You don't need to flip them in that case. So Mr. Roy is talking about this one in row two. Yeah. Okay. We divided um, each side by, what number is that? Positive two. Good, positive two. If you divide by a positive two, okay. you don't flip anything. Okay. There were negatives already in the problem, but who cares if there's already negatives in the problem? Yeah. We only care if we divide by a negative two, and we didn't. So that's, that's important. So you guys get the multiplication property of equality? Inequality, sorry. Equality is for equations. Inequality, that's what we're doing today. Right. Um, so what other property do you think we have? We have the multiplication property of inequality and the? Division. Yeah, the division. Okay. Division is exactly the same thing you had up above. Just change one word. Change multiplication to division and basically write the same thing. Right, so dividing each side of an inequality by a positive results in an equivalent inequality. Right, so this is saying as long as you divide both sides by a positive, you're okay. You get a true statement. So dividing each side of an inequality by a positive number results in an equivalent inequality. But just like before, there's an if here. And you got a spot on your notes to write that. What do you think that if is based on what we just did up above? If we divide both sides by what? By what? Sure. Yep. Negative. Yeah, perfect. If we divide both sides by a negative, what do, you, what do you think we need to do? Just like we did with multiplication. Yeah? We gotta flip it. Yeah, we gotta flip it. Thanks, Gabe. Gabe's on fire. Flip the inequality. Okay, so it's nice, it's the same rule for whether you multiply or divide by a negative. You gotta do the same thing. Flip the inequality. Okay, so now these are the other two properties we're going to have. We might still have some of the type we did yesterday, where we don't have a negative in every single problem. Okay, but if you do, and you divide by it, we'll need to flip. Okay, but don't forget about adding. Okay, don't forget about subtracting from both sides. We can still do those kinds of things. And I think there's a problem or two towards the end that might have that in it. Okay, but we'll, we'll start out with just some, some basic ones. Okay. Does everyone have the division property? You got that? All right. All right, so this says 7x is less than negative 56. All right, so this is kind of problem. You got one step. One step to get x by itself. Anyone think they can tell me how I get x by itself? Caitlin? Yeah, we're going to divide by, can you say it one more time? Divide by 7. Divide by 7. Yep. 
divide by 7. Okay. 7 divided by 7, that cancels. Okay. Um, Ryan, what's on the left-hand side now? Um, 8. Uh, so just the left. We'll get to the right in a second. It's uh, x. X. All right. And now, what's on the right-hand side? The symbol of... Um, what's, what's negative 56 divided by 7? 8. Negative 56 divided um, by 7. It's uh, negative 8. Yeah, negative 8. And now the last question we have to ask ourselves, should we flip the sign? No. no, but there's a negative in front of the 56. I thought I flipped when I had negatives. Isn't it if you divide by but a it's negative? already in Right, exactly. It's already in the problem. I didn't divide by a negative. I divided by a positive 7. Exactly. So I, do I flip it or not? No, don't flip it. Leave it just like that. And that's it. So x is less than negative 8. Yep, we're going to graph it right now. Yep. Okay, so on your number line, just put down negative 8. It doesn't matter where you put it, but put a number that's smaller and put one number that's bigger. Okay. All right, um, let's see. Next thing I have to decide. Um, about then, well, what are I going to decide next? If it's going to be a closed or open circle. Right, you can decide if it's a closed or open circle. Corey? It's an open circle because it doesn't have the equal to. Exactly. It's an open circle because it doesn't have the equal to. All right, so now I'm just about there. Um, Ariana, what's the um, last thing I need to decide? What way to draw to shade? Yep, i got to decide which way to shade. And Alexis, how do I decide um, which way to shade? The way, the way it's pointing. So in this case, to the to the left. Yep, and that's it. All right. So pretty much the same idea as yesterday, except now you might multiply or divide. Okay. Questions on that? So there is no example 1B. Okay, that was 1A. This is 1C. There's no 1B. Oh, you guys got Oh, so you renumbered it? This is 1B on yours? All right, we'll make it 1B. It's a different problem, too. This is 4X. 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 
Okay, so this this is what you should get. This is correct. All right, all right. Circle time. What kind of um, what kind of circle do I need on negative seven closed? How come? Because it's greater than or equal to. Careful. I, I like the idea that you said it's an equal to, but it's not a greater than or equal to. Yeah, this is a less than or equal to. So we're going to put a closed circle. I got to number my number lines. So let's just put down negative seven. What's one number smaller? Uh, negative six, that's bigger. Smaller? Yep, negative eight. All right, let's so get our number line set up. And which way am I going to shade? How um, about Justin? Right. Why did you decide that? Yeah, why are you going to go left? Why did you decide that? That's where the arrow points. That's where the arrow points. Arrow's pointing left. We're going to shade to the left. Okay, nice catch. What do I do? I mean, my handwriting Oh, you thought that was the arrow. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Sometimes sevens, sevens can look like arrows if you you know, draw them like that. Yep. Yeah, I'll put the line in there so you guys know it's a seven. Okay, any questions on example 1B? No? All right. So let's take a look um, at 2A. And does that match up with what you guys have? Yeah. Okay. All right, so this, this one right here, Example 2A should kind of remind you of something we did in the warm-up. Okay, look at, let's see if I can find it, D. Okay, example D in the warm-up. It had a fraction in front of the letter. Well, it's exactly what we have here, a fraction in front of the letter. All right, so what was the trick we used here? to get rid of this fraction. Kevin? Two over one. What are you, yeah, you going to do with the 2 over 1? Yep, yeah, we're going to times it on both sides. How did you get 2 over 1? Where did that come from? You're right, but I'm just wondering, how did, where did you get 2 over 1 from? You flipped. What'd you flip? Who can help him out? What did he flip to get the 2 over 1? Yeah, he flipped the 1 over 2. He flipped the fraction, the coefficient of x. Yep. All right, so we're going to multiply by 2 over 1. By 2 over 1. On the right side, 2 in the top, 2 in the bottom. That's gone. 1 in the top, 1 in the bottom. That's gone. Okay, left-hand side. Um, Logan, what do I have on the left? You have 2 times 5 divided two, by 1. Yep, 2 times 5 divided by 1. We've got to do that out. 10 divided by 1, which is just Yeah, which is just 10. Okay, Chloe, since the 1's gone, the 2's gone, the 2's gone, the 1's gone, what's the only thing I have left here? X. Yep, good, just the X. And now the big decision, do we flip this symbol? No what do we think? Kevin, you, got, you want to help her out? We got an idea? You're saying no? Anybody support him? Why he says no, I, I agree. But why, why is he correct? Yeah? Yeah, we'll, f we'll figure out if we need to fix the you know, variable on the left. We'll do that after. But yeah, Kevin, why don't we flip it? Yeah, we didn't multiply by a negative. Okay, we multiplied by positive 2. Right, so you're not wrong if you leave it like this. It, it's just that this isn't telling you which way to shade. Now we've got to do that trick we did yesterday. So who can fix that for me so that we're 
getting it in the right form. Yep? X is greater than 10. X greater than 10. Perfect. OK, so the flip that we do here doesn't have anything to do with a negative. It just has to do with getting it in the form Mr. Roy talked about yesterday. OK? All right, uh, let's make our number line. Let's put 10. Okay, uh, Zach, give me a number smaller than 10. Eleven. Smaller? Nine. Nine. Oh, I like 11 for bigger, though. That's good. And gauge what kind of circle? Uh, open. open. Gabe, what number does the circle go on? Uh, ten. 10. Corey, what's the next thing we need to decide? Which way the arrow is going to go? Um, Alex, which way is the arrow going to go here? To the right. To the right. And that's it. Any question on, on that one? X is greater than 10. Open circle, shade right. All right, let's see. Do we have... We got, all right, let's try this one. This one a little, little harder because the fraction this time doesn't have a 1 in it. All right, 1 arithmetic is usually easier with the number 1, but hopefully this arithmetic won't be, won't be too bad. All right, without, without me giving any um, suggestions, anybody have a thought as to what we're going to do here? All right, I like that idea. Flip the fraction and do what with it? <coughs> Careful. Negative. Yeah, when you flip it, it stays negative. All right. So he gave me the fraction negative three halves. What um, what am I going to do with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to multiply it on both sides. Put negative three over two times negative three over 2. And on the left-hand side, we did that. We get the 3 in the top, 3 in the bottom, negative 2 in the top, 2 in the bottom. Everything cancels out. And of course, the negatives cancel out because negative times negative is a positive. All right, so Ariana, what's on the left-hand side now? Just x. Okay, right-hand side, I don't have a fraction here, but if I want to make it a fraction, uh, Maria, what could I do? Put a 1 under it. And now you've got two choices. You either can reduce this before you multiply, or you can reduce after you multiply. It's up to you. You guys want to reduce before, or you want to reduce after? After. All right, we're going to procrastinate. I'm going to put it off for now. Okay, what's... Um, 12 times negative 3. What's Sam? What that is? What's 12 times negative 3? Negative 36 divided by, Gabe, what's 1 times 2? 2. Good. All right, big, the big question, do we flip that inequality? Look at what you multiply both sides by and see if we need to flip it. Any thoughts? To flip or not to flip? Like Gavin? What do you think? What did you multiply both sides by? Uh, uh, the, one. Uh, the 12, that, that was part of the original problem. But what did we add to that right-hand side? What did we put in parentheses next to it? Negative three over two. What's the first word of what you said? Negative. Negative. All right, that's, that's the key right there. Multiply both sides by a negative. So, what do you think? Flip it or not, or not to flip it? Yeah, we've got to flip it. Okay, since we multiply both sides by a negative, we're going to flip it. 
And if I can reduce this, I probably should. Does, does this number reduce? Yeah. Yeah. Into negative 18. Negative 18. Okay, so there's our answer. X is less than or equal to negative 18. Right, so on my number line, I'll put negative 18, put a number that's bigger, put a number that's smaller. Uh, Ryan, what kind of circle on negative 18? Closed. Yep, I'm going to do closed. And Callan, last thing I need to do is, and which way does it go this time? Yep, shade left. Any question on um, example 2B? So did you flip the sign? I did. Yeah, it was pointing right. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's pointing left. Yeah. Okay, any questions on 2B? All right, Mr. Roy, you want to take a look at 4A with him? Mr. Roy's tagging in. Um, guys, it's going to be a little bit different. I mean, same thing. But now we'll combine what we did yesterday with what we did today. I will do a little bit of both. So the inequalities we did yesterday, what do we have to do? Anybody remember? Solve the ones we did yesterday. Plus six. Huh? Plus so we did, okay, so we did add, we did, we added and subtracted yesterday. Today, what have we done? Multiplication and division. This is going to be two steps. So I agree with Gage. Gage says subtract six. So minus 6. Am I going to minus 6 anywhere else? It's a negative 5. All right. Perfect. Same sign. But remember, I'm not multiplying. So what do I get? Negative 11. Negative 11. Good man. Okay, negative 11 here. It's going to bring down my sign. Um, Just do negative 3x. Negative 3x. Then you got to divide. Divide by what? Negative 3. Negative 3. On this side, what am I left with? I divide negative three by negative three x by negative three. What's left? Just the x, right? That's the whole reason we do it. We want to get x by itself. So here's the x here. Now, now, anything else besides doing negative eleven divided by negative three? Is there anything else I have to do? How come, Corey? Yeah, because we divide by negative, right? So all I'm going to do is just flip the sign, right? It's going to go this way now. And then negative 11 divided by negative 3. Kev, what's your result going to be? Okay, I agree. What kind of a decimal, positive or negative? Look what you're doing here, right? Negative 11 divided by negative 3. How come? What's the rule? Two, two negatives make a positive, right? So we're gonna do we're gonna do negative eleven divided by negative three. That's what he's gonna do it right now. I found hair in my gum. Okay, thanks for sharing. So it's like we'll call it like we'll call it like three three point seven. Is that fair, Mr. Hager? I call it three point seven, guys. I got three point six six. Okay, I'll say okay. This is bigger than five. That'll make this seven. I don't want to get it big into how you round numbers up because it's not something we're really concerned about. So we'll get 3.7. Now the cool thing about these ones is all it says to do is solve. We don't have to graph. We're just, we're just solving. So on the test, right, or on homework or the review we do on Thursday, make sure you pay attention to what the directions are. All right? I know you guys all love math and you want to do more than you need to. All right? But if we're just solving it, just solve it. We don't do any extra math. Okay? Now, if I was going to graph that, I'm not worried about which way the line is going to go. I'm not worried about what kind of circle it's going to be. All I'm worried about is where would this number, this 3.7, where would it fall, Corey? In between 4 and 3. In between 3 and 4, right? Closer to 3 or closer to 4? Closer to 4. How come? Yeah, so like 3.5 would be right in between. You get 3.7, be a little bit closer to 4 than it would to 3. And again, usually on a test or something, we're usually not going to have a decimal, but it might show up sometimes. So, I mean, you guys know, you guys know how to find that in a number line. It's not too bad. 
right? So this combines both uh, both things. We had to we had to divide, and we had well, we had to add a subtract first, and then we had to divide. All right, so a little bit of both. Um, same thing for this one. Um, cancel that. So same kind of thing here. All right, now I have variables on both sides, numbers or integers on both sides. So we can move either thing first. Doesn't matter. You can move not. You can move the regular integers and numbers first. Or you can move the variables first. Um, Alex, what do you want to move first? Integers or variables? I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. You want to move the integers first? Which one do you want to move? Well, before we even do that, Alex, what are the two integers? Um, five and seven. Five and what? And negative seven. Thanks. That's much better. So five and negative seven. Which one do you want to move? Uh, the negative seven. I, why'd you pick negative negative seven, Alex? I would pick I would pick negative seven. Does that, well, does anybody think they might know why we should pick negative seven as opposed to five? Kevin. Okay, we could do that. Anybody else that think might have a reason? Caitlin? Okay, exactly. We'll cancel it out without making it a bigger negative. When I do, when we talked about this, this is like a couple months ago when we did uh, equations. And when I look at the two numbers of the two integers, I look at one, I try to move the one that's worth a lesser amount. All right? Five and negative seven, negative seven is smaller than five. I want to, so that because I subtracted five here, I got to subtract five here, then I'm dealing with negatives. And a lot of times you guys make that mistake when it's negative, when it's negative seven and negative five, you say, oh, well, when I multiply, I have two negatives, it makes a positive. And you, sometimes you guys make that mistake. All right, so let's add seven. So now we're dealing with positives. We'll add seven over here. This cancels out. Five and seven, 12. And I'm just gonna bring everything else down. All right, so I moved my, so I moved my integer, or my numbers. Now, what do I have to move now? What do I have to move now? Zach, what's my only, am I gonna, let me ask you this. Am I gonna move numbers or am I gonna move variables now? Okay. Variables, so I already moved the numbers, right? So what's the only choice you have for the variable, hold on, Corey, what's, thank you though. What's the only variable you have as, as a choice to move? Huh? Okay, we're gonna move X. Which one? Because there's two of them, right? Which one do you want to move? Number four. Okay, what kind of a four is it? Negative. Negative four, right? Because why would you move that? Why would you move that one, Zach? Get rid of the negative. Get rid of the negative, right? And I want to get. I want to get. Remember, letters on one side, numbers on the other. So I'm gonna add four X here, just like I would. Just like I, all this stuff is solving as if it wasn't an as if, if it wasn't an equation as if this was a equal sign we're not worried about we're not worried about we're not worried about dividing by a negative yet we're not worried about any of that stuff yet we're not at that point all right so add add 4x add 4x bring down the 12 on this side keep the sign 2x 4x pretty simple what do we get guys thank you all right um, Ryan J, last, one of our last steps. What do you want to do now? Six. Divide by six. How come, how come six and not 12? Because, uh, um, if we divide 12, we won't get anything on that side. Okay. And also, we always divide by the number that has the, the variable attached. Because we want to get that variable by itself. Here, here. So on this side, what's left, guys? Just x, right? That's what we did to get x by itself. Does my um, gauge, does my sign flip on this one? Uh, yeah. It does. Who agrees? Si flip the sign. Who says flip it? I'm going to flip the sign this one. Who says no? Who's brave enough to say no, we don't flip the sign? There we go. I like it. 
Mr. Hager says it too. He ain't scared. How come, Caitlin? Yeah. Did you, did, you, did you catch a mistake as we got going? We didn't divide. This is a negative. This is a negative gauge. Yes. Gauge. Hello. Earth to gauge. This is a negative. Yes. But it's a positive. All right? Don't make more work than you need to. You don't like math to begin with. No. All right? All right. So I leave this. I don't have to change the sign. On this side, what do I get? What's wrong with this? Ryan? Um, X is on the right. Yeah, so what do I do? Flip it. I call it the spatula method. Just take it. Flip it over. All right? This, remember, my arrow is pointing at my two. When I rewrite it, the arrow should still be pointing at the two. There it is. What's the good thing about this one? What did the direction say? Just Anybody remember? Just to solve it. We like that, right? I don't have the graph. And we've done, we've done a bunch of graphs too. So that's it for that one. So that's combining both things. You have to either add or subtract and then divide or multiply. Stuff we've done before, stuff you guys have done before this. Don't panic and say, I can't do it because you see this. You see an inequality sign. Don't panic. The only time that's really going to come into play is if we Multiplying or dividing by a negative, and we have to graph it. Other than that, we'll, until we get to that point, we'll treat, this, we'll treat this inequality sign just like it's an equal sign. Still balancing stuff, still moving stuff. Same thing you would do as if it was an equation. Okay. Um, Can I move on? No, no. Um, okay, but uh, I, instead of doing a 7 first, starting, I put, I subtracted the 2x. Oh, you move the axis first? So That's not wrong. Did you get the same thing? Yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, you, there's no, if, you want, if you wanted to move the axis first, that's fine too. If you wanted to subtract 5 first, you could do that. If you wanted to add a 4 first instead of moving the 2, you could do that. There's a lot of different ways you can attack that problem. All right? As long as you come up with this, you're good. All right? That's just the way I, we could have done it a whole bunch. We could have done it three or four different ways. All right, go with this. All right. Now we get into a little bit longer. Same kind of thing, though. We're going to have to do some, a little bit of both. A little bit of both things. And this All is right. going to be a special one. Okay, something very special is going to happen here. Whoa, I'm scared. And I like Jalen's idea of maybe moving the X's first. That's a good okay. idea for this problem. Move the X's first, Hager says. And Hager's infinite wisdom. All right. Um, so, Jay, since you had that idea, what do you want to move? 6x, then add 6x. Add 6x. I'm going to add, add 6x here. And where else? To the other side. To the other side. What happens here? Cancel out. Uh-oh. What happens on the other side? Cancel out as well. Cancels out. So I have no x's left. All right, all I have left is eight. What does that say? Um, Alexis, how do I read that to say? Eight is greater than negative three. There's no variables left, right? Is this a true statement? Is 8 greater than negative 3? Yeah. It's a true statement, right? So when you have a situation like this, in this case, what happened? What? Well, Mr. Hager said this is going to be a special case. What happened here to make it so special? That was different from what we've done before. Okay. So what happened? What happened to the variable? Disappeared, right? There's, in this case, every other, every other one we've done, there's been a variable. In this case, no variable. All right? The variable disappeared. This happened, we had a negative 6 on this side, and we added a 6. This so happened we had the same number on the other side. But we got a true statement. This is true. This checks out. 
When you have a situation like this, when the variable disappears, and it's a true statement, your answer is going to be all real numbers, right? All real numbers. So what that means is in the original problem, you can pick any number you want, and it'll always be true. It's impossible to make this one. So I'm saying you're saying you can pick any number you want for x. Any number you want for x. Wait, I could put I could put negative one million and two here. It would still it would still come out to whatever. I did all the work. The number on this side would be greater than the number on that side. It would work every time. So we have a situation like that. This means this means that variables So that's when the variables disappear, or variables cancel out, and it's a true statement. All real numbers. That's, so that's, one, spe that's one special case. All right? Exactly like Mr. Roy did, don't write true as your answer. No. Nope. True is, is what happened, but the answer is all real numbers. All right, look, because we're going to get into another special case now. All right, so we had all real, and I think on this sheet there was like a little arrow. You want to write, or if you, are, you might want to write this, this little hint to yourself. Variables cancel, and it's a true statement. And then maybe in your box you put all real numbers, all right? Because the statement has to be true in order for it to be all real numbers, all right? I'll leave that up there for a second so you guys, unless some of you guys are still ready. So just like we had, like, when you think back, like, a couple academic weeks ago, we had, like, the, we were graphing. We had, like, y equals, and we had a certain kind of line. We had x equals, and we had a certain kind of line, what we call those special cases for graphing. These are special cases for when we're doing inequalities. All right, so all real numbers for this one. I don't think there's another one on this page. There is. All right, so same kind of thing. And like Mr. Hager said, Jalen suggested, we want to get rid of the variables first. So Kev, what do you want to do? I want to, get, I, I want to move the variables first. So what do I do? Negative 5x to both sides. Same situation we had as before, right, Kev? On this side it cancels. Does it cancel on the other side? So last time when the variables canceled, what did we have? What kind of a statement? True, right? So what do you think we're going to have this time? If we had a true in the one before, what do you think we'll have now? We have a false one. Right? Make sure. So I was kind of looking at first, like, well, how is that going to be, how's that going to work? I almost forgot to bring down my negative 9. Remember, sign to the left. All right? So, um, Logan, how does this read? How do I read that? Eight less than equal to negative 9. What do you think? True statement, false statement. False statement, right? So this guy, so this situation, we had variables cancel, and it's a false statement. So for the one before, for the one before it, we had all real numbers. What about this one? What do you think? Is that possible? So what's another word for an answer to a problem? Find the what. Starts with an S. So close. Solution. So this guy, it doesn't work, right? What do you think your answer is? No solution. All right, so those are your two special cases. You have all real numbers. That's when variables, variables cancel out, and you're left with a, pos a true statement. Right? What's left is true. If it cancels out, and you're left with a false statement, no solution. All right? You might see one of those maybe on a test or homework or something like that. All right? So 
people good with this, or people need more time to get that written down? Ryan, you need more time? Good? All right. So, homework, worksheet, I think there is, similar to last night, eight problems. All right, I think the first two or three, it's this, you know, you know, this one step, like multiply or divide, and there's a few that are a little more complex. Remember, we'll do 5-4 tomorrow, review day on Wednesday, uh, excuse me, Thursday, and then test on Friday. Of course, on Thursday night, you'll get the reference sheet that you can use on the test on Friday.